Good morning everyone. Pwede na tayo mabalik sa atong mga lingkuranan. Can you greet the person beside you? I'm glad that you are here. To your left and to your right. So welcome to another great Sunday. No, are you are you expectant, brethren? No, excited bang tanan? Oh no, let's be excited for God really has prepared a very amazing word for all of us this morning, and I'm glad I'm back. I think after two months, no, so I'm here to be used by God again as His mouthpiece. Uh, so His Word will be delivered this morning. So let's bow down our heads. Mag-ampo sa ta. O most gracious Heavenly Father, we dedicate to you this time, Lord, that we are gathered again to worship and glorify your name. Holy Spirit, be with us in the study of your Word. We pray that you would open up our hearts, our minds, so that we can really understand and internalize the message that you prepared for us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This morning, the title of my sharing is Stirring Up Our Passion for God. Say the word passion. And it's a very nice word. In fact, here in this world, if you will be um, described to be passionate, what do you mean by that? No? So, our text will be taken from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Bible scholars believe that when Apostle Paul wrote the second letter to Timothy, he was this time in prison. And as you could read the whole letter of the second Timothy, in summary, this is full of encouragement. This is also full of exhortation. And this is also full of admonition to a faithful servant, Timothy, in the midst of what? Sufferings, oppositions, and difficult times. In fact, if you would study further, a lot of Bible scholars also have said that this was the, the last letter of Paul before his death. Now, so during his struggling missionary journey, Timothy was with Paul. Of all Paul's encouragement that can be read in 2 Timothy, this morning God is leading us specifically to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. So sa kadaghan kaayo niyang mga encouragement dito kang Timothy, din hita dalhon sa ginoo karon Kani ang pagtuo ni Ining, 2 Timothy verse 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. And I'll be reading from the NIV version. You can open up your app also if you have your Bible app. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Just a brief backgrounder, brethren. Timothy served as Paul's messenger or emissary. So during their time, uh, during the Apostle Paul's missionary journey, isa si Timothy sa iyahang mga, kung sa ato pa nakaroon, iyang representative, iyang diplomat. And as, when 2 Timothy was written by Paul, Timothy was already pastoring the church at Ephesus. Dito na siya nag-minister mainly sa church in Ephesus. And since then, he was with Paul in various places. No, you could read that in the book of Acts. Timothy was a gifted and valuable man for the kingdom of God. In fact, ingon si Apostle Paul nga si Timothy ang iyang faithful one, ang iyang faithful servant. Paul acted as the mentor of Timothy. Guys, sa account sa Bible, bata pa man si Timothy. Although the exact age of Timothy was, was really not accounted for, pero ang, ang, ang description nga bata, youthful siya, ang iyahang pagkayang na adid to. 
Okay, so during his pastoring, his ministry, mainly in the church at Ephesus, Timothy has a large and heavy responsibility as the overseer. Kaya siya man ang nagdumala. Siya man ang gitugyana ni Paul. Diba? Daghan ka yung, daghan ka yung gi, 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 bi, gibilin sa iyaha si Apostle Paul. So just like any one of us serving with God, and just like any ordinary human being, Timothy could also what? Could feel what? Frustrated. He could also feel the persecution, the rejection, no? the, the challenges, and even the timidity. So that's why, because of the possession of Timothy and the responsibility that he had to bear, maugin ni dapat ang dapat madunggan ni Timothy. Kaning 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. Okay? Now, I am presenting to you here the said verses in three translations so that we, we, we can also compare. In the NIV, the phrase used there is, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame. That's quite an idiomatic expression. No? Kana bang um, fan into flame. And we will uh, know that in a little while. In the The Voice version, Ang gagamit dito is to stir up. To stir up. In the Amplified Version also, the phrase used there was fan into flame. So same with NIV. Alright? Now, what is to stir up? Originally, I also, I also thought that to stir up is, kana yung ordinary na nga stir up nga. Just like stirring up your coffee or stirring up your milk. Lahi mendi ay ang original na, na meaning anang stir up. In the Greek word, it is anazoporeo. The meaning of that is to kindle afresh or to keep in full flame. That's stirring up. So exactly, that's lahi na no, sa ato ang pag stir up, pag kutaw. Dili di ay kana ang stir up sa, sa original niya na, na, na Greek word. Now, fan into flame, stir up. So they are really connected. They are really synonymous because it's keeping the flame in full. It's keeping the flame burning strong. And I'm showing you this picture taken from Google. In the early days, cooking with the use of firewoods was a trend. And for those of you who have experienced it, we know very well how was it. No, We remember our childhood. Kisa sa inyo ba nakasulay in ani nga magdungag ta nga ginamit ang uh, kahoy. And in fact, right now, some, no, especially those who are living in the outskirts, in the hinterland, they still do. Especially that the, ri the rising cost of fuel is now in, na mamalik kita kahoy ni ini. <laughs> But nonetheless, if you could, kasi sa ako ang nakaagimang ko, Ana, as a litenia, during our time also, um, yeah, we are also using firewood to, to cook our food. Now, if you could remember that, I just don't know if you find it, uh, you, you, find it you find it amazing or you find it very challenging or burdensome. Depende na ginasa inyo. Kaya uban, wala good na lipay, good at tong firewood. Kay... It will take time, di ba? Dugay kay kakakook. Oo. Ang uban po, well, we find it very, oo, very, ano din siya, no? very beautiful because it's a ritual. <laughs> mag arrange arrange may kaadtong mga, mga kahoy o uban pa. No? So, that's it. That, that, that's our past. No? So, very nice. I, I, ingon pa bitaw sa mga katigulangan nga. Lahiragod ko, no? Ang, sana, ang nadungag, ginamit ang kahoy kay humot. So, whichever is, whatever theory you have for that, it's up to you. Kasi right now, we just want the instant thing. Kasi nagmamadali tayo. Tama ba? So, just one click of our stove, there we go. No? Sa una, siguro, it will take us 30 minutes to one hour just to cook our rice. But right now, just turn on your rice cooker and voila, you have your cooked rice. But the point here, brethren, that is exactly what Paul is telling to Timothy. 
to stir up, to keep the flame in full. So for those of you who experience it, di ba kay bantayan man nato ang, ang kalayo? Because by the time you would just left it, it will die down. So hence the song, The Dying Ember. Ang baga ba? Ma Mahinahinay na siya kaog daw. So what are we going to do? It's either we will put some more firewoods, dungaga na po na to, unya, tayo po na sad na to. Same thing here in your case. Y you also blow the, the, the firewood, no? Lahi mong po tong fan, kay kuan man to, kay nang nagsugba naman to ang tong fan. <laughs> di ba? Gatay hope, gihapon ta, di ba? Oo, we really blow to our lungs, good, in Ana. That's childhood for me. And I still do, no? So every time kasi, I, I also had my rest for a very busy week. Ganasa ko mga ingana, no? Ganasa ko magluto-luto, ganana. Well, not here in the city, but somewhere. Alright? So that's it. To fan into flame. Never let the flame die down. Muna ang point ni Paul. Muna ni nga, nagigikan dito ng iyahang word nga stir up or fan into flame. You just have to keep the fire burning bright and strong. Dili ka pwedeng maugdawan sa imong baga. Okay, now. This morning, brethren, is also a good mid-year spiritual evaluation for all of us. Because we're almost done with the second half of the year. July naman dayon ta karon na weekend. And how are we? How are we? The pandemic is waning. We're almost winning it over talaga. Um, things and people are almost back into its normalcy. Murag, okay naman good ta. No? COVID is, the cases of COVID is slowly decreasing. You would take off your mask and almost it's normal. Di ba? Kanina man lang good ang naka, nakapugong na to, kanig yung mask. After taking off this mask, murag pareha naghapon ta sa una. But how are we? Kanagin ang pangutana. Does our spiritual fire need to be stirred up? Gakalayo pa ba ta? Or gakabugnaw na ta? Basig na pariha na kita karon sa COVID nga. Hinay-hinay na po siyang nawala. You see, this was really the moment that we're dreaming for, that we're praying for back then in 2020. ba? Mubalik tagamay ha, two years back. Nainom do mo ni Addo that the church is so empty. Kami sa, sa pulpit ministry, it was really a struggle. Kay mo anhiman mi just to record, di ba? Just to record our sermons. And mind you, makahilak yun bitaw mi nga, we're standing here, and then the chairs are all empty, and no one really is physically hearing us. Yan, nakaingon yun ko sa akong self, Addo nga, Lord, mabalik pa baka to nga, Kanibitong mga blanco din hi, naanagin ni mga tao. And we prayed that for so long. And God is finally answering our prayer. We're back. Hallelujah. No? Naata. Naata. Nakabalik na ta. Although there's still that uh, one meter or two meter distancing, but naanagin ta physically. Okay? Now, Matthew 24, verses 12 to 13, talks about the signs of the end times. I have shared you on this, I think, on the latter part of 2021. Ibalik lang na ako gamay. Verse 12, it says here, Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Mone atong bantayan, Kagitag na na, matod pa, no? That the signs of the end times will be getting cold. That's another idiomatic phrase. Ang pagkabug now. So exactly the opposite of stirring up. Kung ganina, kalayo ang ato ang picture, karun sab is a frozen heart. No, maunay atong bantayan. Nga hinay-hinay na giyod, mauni siya, no? In fact, when you speak of to grow cold, what do you mean by that? Because that's an idiomatic phrase. To grow cold is, walang gana. You lose interest or enthusiasm. It's either for something or someone. Wala na gitay gana. Mo nang ingnon ganit ka nga, you're growing cold. Well, wala na. Wala na giyod. You gradually lose the heat. So ganina giingnan ka nga, anazoporeo. Stir up. Fan the flame. 
Well, you just can't really relate on that. Kay wala na, nagbugnaw na yun, frozen ng heart. And if you are referring this to someone, you fall out of love with someone. Brethren, growing cold is one of the greatest prophecies now being fulfilled in our time. Wala na gid na siya kapugni. Hapit na gid ang pag-abot sa atong ginoo. Kay nabati naman ni nato one way or the other. In fact, even among Christians, naa na gid ang pagka pagkabugnaw. Asa man ta pwedeng mabugnaw? We have some samples here. The love has grown cold. Where? Cold for evangelism. Dili siguro ta or uban sa atua kana bitong bugnaw na ta nga mga big ug kalag. We can really feel the difference pre-pandemic and post-pandemic time nga dasig kayo ta nga mo share sa word but right now well wala na okay lang. Or call for ministry. We left our ministry here in the church. No, bastante na lang sa to ang well maglingkod na ta we can we can be really encouraged every Sunday sermon the love has grown cold. Another is cold for reading the Bible. Murag kasuka una ta nga balik-balik ra man gud gihapon. Wala nay gana. Another is cold for Christianity so even your faith na wala na. Ang nabugnaw na ta and even cold for attending church functions. Mo na tong bantayan. During the pandemic, at the height of the pandemic, back in 2020, we know it that our faith was severely affected and threatened. Ang ato ang ang atong passion, ang atong flame. Kaya wala matanda kita, de ba? And we are really designed to gather together as Christians. So did to get ang gabi ng testing, magpadayon pa bata. Mubalik pa bata sa simbahan sa panahon nga mag face to face na or nagpadayo na bagyo nga nabugnaw na gyud ang atong kasing-kasing sa pangalagad sa Ginoo. God is always passionate. Say the word passionate. Yes. Kung ang in as much as God is concerned, he is always passionate about his relationship with us. And that passion, listen carefully, will never be affected by any person across time and environment. Ang ginoo dili gina siya, never na siya mo bati o kabugnaw sa atua. Kita man ang mabugnaw, kita siguro ang mo bati o kabugnaw sa atong pangalagad sa ginoo, but never God. That is an assurance for every one of us. This morning, brethren, let's give God a clap offering. So what is passion? Because that is our central theme today. Steer up your passion. Let's go to Webster. Webster Dictionary says, When you speak of passion, it refers to a great devotion and intense. Take note of the descriptions there. Intense conviction which fuels or motivates toward compelling action. So, ing nun ganit kagpasyon, it's not an ordinary liking. Dili na na siya like. Just like when you like an FB post. It's higher than that. It's not even loving, mere loving. It's even higher in that kind of emotion. Kasi ang passion, it's intense. Sobra pa ni Ana. That's why it can really drive you crazy. It can drive you to action. So mo nang hiingon sa Webster nga, it can fuel you. Itukmod ka ba nga buhato ni mong isa kabutang kay ganahan gad kaayo ka. Maunay passion. So if a person will call you, abi ni mo, passionate gad kaayo ka nga tao towards this like for example, this advocacy or this program, you are intense. Kanang dili ka mabangbang. Bisag ingnon ka nga dili, magtuman giga kay passion mo na. I always remember, every time I, I, there is one program I run, and then you, you see, you really also have to encourage no, some executives all along yeah, you know my job, no? It's it's on HR and organizational development side. More gini ang premi na kung ingon sa ilahang. At the end of the day, it's all kapoy. That's true, no? You would really feel drained physically and emotionally, and even mentally. 
But you see, itulog mo lang yan. Tomorrow, you will wake up again and you will do it again. That's passion. Nasabta na, gahit ikag-ulo ka na bang, di ka mo tagam mo na siya'y passion. Wapagani mo ni Ananda Pita, di pa mo passionate. Hello? Mo nang usay ingnon tanga ikaw gay kay kag ulo actually ang ang ano siguro ana no ang ang english ana ingnon na tatong parents dili maoy passionate lang ko <laughs> we just hope this morning our passion is on the right direction and that's how god loves us kay passionate man gyud ang ginuo sa ato so that's why god is said to be his stubborn love bisag kapila ta makasala God is still there. No, ulo ang gino. God will never ever give up on us. Kanindot no? Kanindot gid kay ni Ana. Now, I'm showing to you again it's a comparative verses in Exodus 34 verse 14. NLT it says, "You must worship no other gods, for the Lord whose very name is jealous is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you." In the NIV, still the, the description views is a jealous God. You look at the Living Bible. God who claims absolute loyalty and exclusive devotion. And you look at the Common English Version. The Lord is passionate. The Lord's name means a passionate God. So God Himself is passionate. That's why God doesn't like to have a rival in our lives. Mo nang suko gid kay siya og magsimba taglain nga mga Dios-Dios. Why? Nature sa Ginoo ang paging passionate. Go back again to what have we described about being passionate? It's intense. It's more than liking, it's more than loving. It can really drive you crazy. Ing ana po ng Ginoo. That's why he really means business. He is really serious in terms of worshiping him. Only one, no? Kanang wholehearted, absolute devotion. The Apostle Paul's passion was threatened many times. Kung tanaw na tong kinabuhi ni Apostle Paul, grabe. Kung muingon ko ang yang ang yang love or dedication niya sa Ginoo during his missionary journey. I don't know if somebody can really surpass his passion, but it was subjected to different th threats. Second Corinthians, let's read that. Second Corinthians chapter one verses eight to ten. He ingon siya din he. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure. Can you imagine that? Because I cannot. Can I mean, sobra pa sa Among untang makaya. In our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves but on God. On Him, we have set our hope. Mone pronouncement ni Paul. Mone ang giingon nga. Grabe good among nagian. Walay sama. It's even beyond. Sobra pas among makaya. Now you see how the grace of God really no, have seen them through during their time. Kay kung tawhanon lang. Di na makaya. Because what happened to Paul in, the, in, the, in, the, in their history? He was what? He was in prison. He was dragged into court. He was false unjustly. He was stoned and taken for dead. He was terrorized. He was shipwrecked. He was even beaten by a snake. Sana all good, Apostle Paul. <laughs> Pero unsa yang giingon? We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. In all of the crises, Paul did not let this affect his passion for God's work. Hallelujah for that. Kana unta atong inspiration, no? Dili lang po siguro gidingana sa mga nagian ni Apostol Paul kay gamay gani problema mura na gani tag gakamatay naghila siya pa no and imagine how he died no say makaingon bitaw ka nga grabe good amazing gig ka Lord you're a maker you sit on the throne because all of the apostles life they died tremendously no kanang di, di mo ma-imagine ba nga ingana ilang gipang gi, gipang agian 
Ingon pa bitaw. The greatest men and women of the Bible were not superpower. They were not Superman. They're not Wonder Woman. But they had just great passion for God. Mo lang na ang passion man gud mo fuel up gud sa to ah mahimo gud ang dili unta dapat mahimo kay grabe gud ang level sa imuhang love ba super ka intense and this morning brethren we are called by God to be passionate say it passionate do not just say i love the lord no ang level lagi pangayo sa Ginoo nato karon be passionate it's more than that no, katugyo akong gingon, ganina nga, gahe kag ulo, di ka mutagam, kapila ka gi-cancel, kapila ka gi-reject, kapila ka gi-persecute, kapila ka gi-balibaran o Bible study, di ka kagatagam. Maunay passion. Hello! Hallelujah! And it takes a grace to have that. Kay kong kita, Ngano ba gud mag, mag ngano mang gud no nga kala mer gud ingnon nga bahala mo pero no eh passion mo mo nang naa gitay mga kauban diri nga di gid katagam kapila mang invite balibaran sunod na pud pag invite balibaran naa gyud pun sila tomorrow they will do it again because it's passion <laughs> kana ang klase gud nga love ang gino ang gihatag sa Ginoo and brethren can you just imagine if all of us in TGFM have that level of passion Asa ka tadapita ka ron. Grabe, grabe. Di naman ta mapugngan, no? Now, this morning, we will also study the areas in our lives that are destroying our passion. Usay makay nga ibitaw ka nga Lord, I was then passionate. Back then I was passionate. Ginoo na wala man to Lord. I, I was la, like that dying ember, mura kog baga nga naugdaw. Why? What happened along the way? Sige, ato daw kunun tanawon in the Bible, what are the so-called killers of our passion? So that from this time on, muna itong bantayan, hindi mahitabo sa ato. Number one, if a person has an unclear purpose in life. Ingon pa bitaw, Isaiah 49 verse 4 and IV. I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. A person without a purpose is aimless. Muragwa kay padulngan. Wala kay kaduan. You cannot even answer the question, What am I living for? Para asa ni akong kinabuhi? Mo lang ni. Sunday, go to church. Then Monday to Friday, go to work. And then Saturday, do the laundry, do the household chores. And then back on Sunday, kana lang? You really have more or less pangitaon bitaw ginanato nga, What on earth am I living for? Because if you have an unclear purpose in life, that's killing your passion. The mantra is, no purpose, no passion. Because the purpose points us to that direction. And it's the passion that propels us. You always remember that advertisement in a, in a sikat na coffee. Para kanino ka bumabangon? Passion mana. What na lang ito giingon kay? We will be advertising. Mao na siya'y passion. Kaya nabi itong, kay balok ka, nga mo bangon ka because you will take every step of the way to your destiny. Pero kung wala kay, wala ka kay balok sa purpose yung mong kinabuhi, ganaan, ba di ka mo bangon? Wala. Para kanino ka mo bangon? Wala. That's why, no? Ingana siya ka, importante. Listen carefully, brethren. We must define our purpose before we can increase our passion for God. So, kung dirit ang dapita na bikil, pangitaan gina nato, Lord, unsa di ay git akong purpose, hanap-hanap pa man. Ako gitong naingon ganina ni Sister Jen. Well, brethren, in the Bible, what purpose has prompted us to serve? Unsa may mga, unsa yung mga motives na to why we are serving God? Now, we are reminded this morning that serving God must never be, say it, never be, Diligid unta ka ni ang rason na kita nagsilbi sa ginoo. Number one, money. You can read Acts 20, uh, the rest of the verses there, you can read that at home. It should never be about money. It should never be about self-glory. Kaya na, nanilbi ta, tungod kay, tungod kay masikat ta, mahimaya ta, dagang nakaila sa to ano, it's not that. It should never be about prestige or popularity because we'll be well known. Siguro sa ato mga trabaho, but 
you go back to Christianity, that is not really the very purpose why we're called for. Why God save us? Dili gina siya maunga kita ang magpasikat. And it should not be about easy living. Kaya nahibalugid ta that when God save us, we will take up our cross daily. Hala, dili gini nga na, Christianity is never a walk in the park. Although God promises us life, an abundant life, but you need to take the journey. Say the word journey. Yes, lakbayin yun. You look at the lives of the apostles, dili to easy living. Ang ilang gipang buhat. And same thing with us. Kung gitinood, good na to, atong pagkakristyano, ma-feel, good na to, that there will still be persecution. That there will still be people na ma-reject good gihapon sa tua. There will be a lot, just like Timothy. Mo nang giingnan siya, fan into flame, ayaw pagka-discourage. If people are, are leaving the church, if people are still worshiping their idols, padayon lang. If people are hard-headed, kapila na na to, giingnan, dili mamati, that's it, no? But never an easy living life. Because we all know that when really the essence of Christianity, we can have this purpose. Pwede nga sa atong paglakaw, kani ang atong purpose sa kinabuhi. The love for the Lord, the love for His Word, and the love for the people who are lost. That's where you and I are called for, brethren. Diha ta dapat mo eksena. Kay kani ang atong pagtawag. We can have this as our purpose sa kinabuhi. Second, an unused talent. Pwede mamatay ang imang passion sa ginoo if your talents, if your giftings are not used for God's kingdom. 2 Corinthians 7, 17, it says here, Each one should live his life with the gifts that the Lord has given him. So God is very explicit, magkinabuhi ta nga ginamit ang iyang hinatag sa tuwayang giftings. Let's read 2 Peter 4.10. It says, Each of you, take note, not some of you, not most of you, but each one of us. So nobody here in this hall could ever claim that you were not given a gift from God. That's not biblical. Ngamin ka nga, Lord, wala d'yo kay labot, ana. Sila ragid siguro na, kay paghatag ka ng gift, wala d'yo ko nakasalo. No, amen. <laughs> Ambot asa, gikadapita niya. No. Kay kita man tanan. No? Each one of you has been blessed with one of God's many wonderful gifts. For what purpose? For your self-glory? No. For your aggrandizement? No. The purpose is what? To be used in the service of others. No, so, kana mga talento nga gihatag si your skills, your ability, your personality, these are all really given to you for a purpose. Gamiton gud gihapon na sa kahimayaan sa Ginoo, no? If you don't use your talent, you're going to lose your passion. Tinuod ra ba na? Hello. Suma good. Di ba daghan kay tagganahan sa una, wa man to gigamit, namatay ra siya. In the human resource and organizational parlance, we call it competency. And so normally, I always tell my clients and my coaches na ang butang, ang skill na di ni mo gamiton, it really die down. It is natural death. Just like if you're attending a seminar, so after the seminar, you didn't do anything. Di ba nalimtan? Hala ka, nakamaumang ko ana sa una. Unsa ako na ganito? Why? Because you didn't use it. Anything that you didn't use, it will die down. Just like a dying ember. Kana ang delikado. Getagan ta, wala man gigamit na to. That's why you lose your passion. Kasi your talents are your, are your avenue, di ba? Where you can display your passion. If you are talented on musical instrument, that's where your passion is. If you have this gifting, that's where your passion is. Wala man yung magigamit. Brethren, this church has been every now and then, I think every Sunday na good ang atong simbahan ba, nagsige na silag announce nagsige na silag pangampanya for you and I to enlist ourselves to join in the ministries in this church. Unsa pa man inyong gihulat? <laughs> Unsa pa man ka na ng mag-end times na? No ka na bang, mind you, this is serious. 
mawala gid imong passion kung dili nimo gamiton imong gifting. So by the time we get home, it's also good bitaw to reflect, Lord, what am I good at? For those who still discovering. Kaya basin ang umangin sa inyo, nag-discover, discover, pero puro ka ng uban, obvious naman, kabalo naman mo asa mo dapita, dili lang gig ka. Hello? <laughs> Siguro then you're like Timothy ba? Di ba? Ni Timothy nga, giingnan pagin siya ni Paul nga, do not be timid. No? So, Timothy can relate to every one of us kay maulaw ta, mangurog ta. In the pulpit ministry, we're not superpowers. We also have our own frailties. Kung naibalo pa lang mo. Ang pagtindog din hi, dili lalim. But we have that passion to share our giftings to God. Hello, amen. The music ministry. Don't you think? Sa iyon na kayo na ilang gibuhat? No, pangutanaan sila. Hello, Pastor JR and company? No, they just have the passion for God. Di lang sila mo tagam. Di lang gin sila, di ba? Nga, kapila na. Hallelujah. Nabito ko'y kaila sa una. He's a, she's rather a worship leader right now. A renowned worship leader. When he, she had her testimony, I really could not believe kasi ang sabi niya, sa una, grabe ko kuno siya kayabag. Kaya ang yabag out of zone kita. Dili biya ta mga yabag, di ba? O, yung anak, no? Siya gud kaya bagid siya. There was even a point sa iyahang worship lady nga, di pa stop gud. Imagine bitaw da, da, da shame siguro and the ridicule nga. May ka, Lord, di man po siguro ko abot anak nga punto nga. Ipaundang ko kaya bagid ka ayo. But she didn't stop. Wala gud kuno siya ni ngunong kay ganahan gud siya mo kanta. Ang kanta lang adi ganahan niya. You can always connect this this person, okay? They are also pastoring, no? Ah, na mga common friends na mo here in TJFM. What she did? Every night she cried out to God. Yagi kuno nang gipangayo ng Lord. Ganahan man yung kumukanta ni mo. I paraphrase that already. Ganahan man yung Lord. Mayabag man gig ko. Pero guapa ka yun siya kay Beauty Queen man to. Yabag lang gid siya. Pero ang iya lang yung gusto ang pagworship lead. But miracles happen every day, brethren. Story be told, pilara istorya, worship leader siya karon. If you would listen to her sing, makaingon gud ka nga wow, what an angelic and anointed voice. But if you only know the story behind, you will never eh, maingon gud ka God, miracles do exist gud ay gihapon until now. Amen. Ing ana ra pud ta, God will never use our ability because there's none. Wala ba ya? Kung may ka nga, dili ko magpagamit ka, wadyo ko yung abilidad. Kinsay, kinsay na yung abilidad. Because in the first place, wala man kita yung abilidad. It's God-given. God will use our availability. Kaya naabi tayo po yun na ay gitagaan o gifting, di man po magpagamit. Di ahinoy, nagkulang, adi God bless these persons who are available. Amen. So choose yourself right now, brethren. Ah, samang ka. Sa abilidad, usa na ay availability, or you have both. Number three, an unbalanced schedule. Isa pa na. This is now the issue of, are you overwork or underwork? Which one? Ah, man mo, Ana. Sure na ko, kaya balaw nagi ko na yun. We don't have time anymore. We're so busy. We're so busy, no? Sometimes, really, our our week has been eaten up. And voila, it's Sunday. Murag, wala tayo na human. Brethren, the Bible says, there's a season for everything. We need both rest and work. Kana siya. So, makapatay di ay sa passion ang pagiging overwork Huwag ka ito pong opposite na huwag huwag kayo gitrabaho. No? Ako nang in-Englishon. Too much work will cause you to lose your passion. Why? Because God needs time. Love really to grow needs time. Amen? Wala naman ka. Pag-abot na yung mga balay, wala kayo tayo. Hello, Lord. Wala na. Wala na kayo time. So, your passion will die down. Too much boredom then will cause you to also, for you to lose your passion. Wala kita ka paingnan, Ani. Overwork or underwork, that's not the thing. Balance your schedule. Kaya kung laay po ang tanan and you're not doing the things God is calling you to do, 
then you'll also lose your passion. Amiko pagigapunta after ani ani nga. Bible study without ministry is extremely dangerous. Because in life, brethren, listen to this. There is this principle of input and output. What do you mean by that? We take, we take in, we give out. We take in knowledge, we give out knowledge. So kung nag-Bible study ta, we are taking in knowledge, right? Nya wala man tay pouring out. Now, what does the Bible says about that James 2.17? Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by what? By action is? Correct. So kung sige lang tag-take in nga, Lord, mingadjuit na ko ani, humanak ko Bible study, almost from Genesis to Revelation, humanak ko, and yet you're not doing anything, that's dangerous. We are like the Dead Sea, walay outlet. The principle of life is input and then output. Ang imuhang nakatunan na agigawsanan. Kaingon pa, listen carefully. The more you know about God's plan for your life, the more responsible you are to God for that knowledge. Because God will hold us accountable for the things that we know and then we didn't do something about it. We are only increasing the judgment against us. So careful, kita din ha. So every time we have this opportunity, we have to learn more about God's kingdom. Mangita kita gwei nga mas share ginat nato. It's either we we share that through Bible study or we have ministry, no? Kinahanglan magud ang application. Someday God, we will render an accounting to the Lord, just like the giftings. Remember the parable of the talents. Much has been given, much has also has to account also. Paninglan ragita ni aning tanan. That includes our knowledge about God and His kingdom. So balance your schedule. Have rest and work. Have input, but careful. Na agit kay output. Remember, Sea of Galilee. Ang Sea of Galilee is living because it has outlet. Ang Dead Sea is patay. Kasi wak man siya'y outlet. An unconfessed sin, mo po na'y makapatay sa atong passion. Psalm 38 verse 4, ingon si David, My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. No one can feel passionate or enthusiastic in guilt at the same time. Walay inana nga tao. Nga malipayon ka, passionate ka, and then you're guilty. On the inside, wala. That's why guilt is robbing us of that passion. Mabitaw na, nganong gakaluyata? Nganong diligid kayo na ito mahatag ang pinaka-best sa ginoo? It may be a sin. It may be an unconfessed sin. And just like David, ang sayang giingon, bugat kaayo o dunay sala ang atong kasing-kasing mga kaigsuunan. Amen? But one thing is sure, the Lord is so gracious. 1 John 1.9 ang sulbad gid aning tanan if we confess say the word confess if we confess our sins he can be trusted to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness that's why we fall on our knees day by day kay nebalo gid ta nga kun duna tay sala nga gihambin di kita malipayon di kita passionate diha sa Ginoo number 5 an unresolved conflict Job 5.2 Resentment ka na bang imuhang pagka pagka ka na ka nang nakagipang hambin ng mga mga kikiki kalagot kapungot and ana kills a fool and envy slays the simple Job 8.4 You are only hurting yourself with your anger Again settle our resentment jealousy anger if these are not dealt with will become what? Poisons to passion. Dili gid siya pwedeng mag-uban ang ato ang ang atong love kayo sa Ginoo o ang atong mga sentimento nga dili maayo. Brethren, this is a journey because you and I know that this is easier said than done. Amen. 
lugar ka to nakas nakapasala sa tuas sa yon lugar kay pagpasaylo mga ingan na gud nga mga mga emote na to sa Lord murag ha ingan ingan lang ka sa yon Lord but let's ask God's grace just like Paul it's beyond our ability to forgive but with God's grace we can amen o mo na ang atong prayer bitaw sa kanunay because what if you want to be passionate, dapat wala tagid ana na resolve gid unta ng mga mga conflicting nato. And I'm referring to what mga interpersonal relationships nato with our fellow men. Okay. Now, second, the last is an unsupported life. Say it, an unsupported life. Grabi no ang kinabuhi nga wala suportahe. Now, what do you mean by this? Ecclesiastes four nine to ten. It says, two are better than one. Because if one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him. Now, Christianity is a lifestyle that needs support from every member of our church and family. Wala gud unta tay biyaay. Why? We need ako ginang underlinean relationship and fellowship. On a what? Every Monday, every Sunday? No. Regular basis or we will dry up. True? Amen? Relasyon o fellowship para magpadayon ang atong passion diha sa pangalagan. In fact, back in pandemic, di ba, lahir na gidnon ka ng makarelate na naaang fellowship. Nabugno, tag, you know, I could always remember Pastor Alizel ngayon siya nga, for some who are comfortable with the online service, good for you. Na magi mga tao nga well, yeah, okay na Lord, no, I can I can commune virtually also with with fellow believers. Pero hingon siya sa ako dili pwede mamatay ko quote unquote mamatay ko og di ko kaanhi og simbahan. Precisely, brethren, that's your spiritual life. We are not passionate. Because we are not communing with fellow believers. Maghinahinay kita o sana kabugnaw kay wala man ta nakiguban-uban sa atong pariha ka mga Kristiyano. Hello! Who are your companions Monday to Friday? Your office mates who may not even be believers of God. And what are your topics? Of course, it's not about the Bible. It's not about salvation. It's not about 2 Timothy. Mamatay gida, maluya gida. That's why the encouragement, brethren, listen to this. Magkita kita gida, magbanding gud ang mga Kristohanon. Hello, palakpakan nato ang tanan ba? That aside from every Sunday fellowship, we will always support katung men's fellowship, katung kanang sa senior. No, I really salute you for that. Pagkanindot mo nang buhi gina sila kanuan. Gabagabaga ng ilang passion sa ginoo. Nga naman, there will be no room for them to to dry up. Kay murag kada kada semana man mo gamit no? Imagine taga semana. So, we need each other. So, we are encouraging that no? Kanang have some fellowship with fellow Christians and attend regular Sunday service. Kana gud sya. Nakita na nato, no? Ang comparison. During pandemic, we were locked up in our doors. We're just searing the word online. Oh, what's the difference now? When you are here physically, iba talaga. Lahir agyud, kana makita nga di mo ang tinood na tao ba? Physical na siya. Virtual ramagot. May kag-virtual, yeah, more or less, ang kita ni mo is just a, ano lang, a picture or a video. No, make the most of the time, brethren. Spend time with fellow Christians. Spend time with them. Panglakaw mo uban uban good fellow ng Kristohanon. You have to support each other. Relationship, say it. Relationship and fellowship. Again, relationship and fellowship on a regular basis. Kaya basa ng once a year na po. Well, we will dry up. No, now. How do you increase your spiritual passion? Na ako iduha nga ibilin sa inyo ha. For 2022, that's our goal. To be passionate. 
to increase your spiritual passion for those who are all already passionate. So how do you do that? Number one, evaluate your relationship with God. Just like what we're doing right now. It's very healthy spiritually. Naka na bang muhunong sa ka? Unya mangutana ka, Lord, kumusta na ko? Kumusta na ko sa akong paglakaw diha nimo? What am I passionate about? Am I still passionate about God's work or worldly things? We don't know. No? Deceptive ba yung kayo ang word? Basta na nga itong giganahan na karong butanga, katong, katong dili kita magpa, magpapugong are not the things of God anymore. Second, how will people remember me? Would fellow Christians remember me as passionate for God's word or no more? Am I satisfied with my passion for God at the stands right now? Bastante na ka, okay na ka ani, or no Lord? From the scale of 1 to 10, I'm still on the 7. More, more Lord, more of you. So evaluate what needs to change so that God becomes your greatest passion. Perhaps along the way you would reflect, would you need to give up something? Or would you need to give up someone? Depende na sa leading sa ginoo. Okay, unsam na mga blunders ba nga? Kanigid yung mga butang ang nakapa, babag sa to at what? To intensify the fire we have for God. Evaluate, brethren. Evaluate our relationship. The last, go back to the message of the cross. Always and every day, we need to activate our prayer life. Because one author had said, it was on the cross that we fell in love with the one who loved us enough to die for us. It is also at the cross that we will regain that love. Kung nawala gamay, kung nabugnaw ta gamay, balik sa imo sa cross. Kay didto ba gid nakita nato atong first love? Didto pud nato i-regain ang atong first love diha sa Ginoo. Amen. Ingon pabitaw, Mark 12.30, the message version. Jesus said, The first and importance is, Listen Israel, The Lord your God is one. So love the Lord God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence and energy. God will not like a half-baked love from us. Walay inana. Because God in Himself is also passionate. Walay dapat rival ang Lord sa atua. Give it your all. Kana giyod. Wala tong Lord, tunga tunga lang. Wala inana. Give it your all. Now, Romans 12.1 Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. That is, that's a challenge for us this morning. And keep the passion for God going on. Dili ta pwedeng mungundang. Karun pa? Not now. Never, ever. Now is the day that we really need to stir up because you and I, need, God needs us, every one of us, for the expansion of His kingdom. And brethren, it's a choice. It's a discipline. If you really want to grow in the Lord, make it intentional. It is something you must maintain. The word intentional, gani. Tuyuon gidni mo. If you want to grow, tuyuang mo grow ka. You have you have to come here physically. You have to physically open. Na agi kay effort. Hello. Na agi effort mahitabo sa tua. Because God, in all His grace and mighty, would give us also. Ingon pabitaw. Where God leads, He provides. And so this morning, brethren, as we challenge everyone. Stir up your passion. Pakilingi, palihog sa imong katapad. Nyaing na siya, broad sis, stir up your passion. We request the music team. Palakpaka na ito ang ginoo for a very powerful work. Mag-ampo ta nga, nalagsik ta, no? Kanang nagkalayo tagbalik. Kato na nga ugdaw na unta, na tayhupan ug balik. Because not now, daghan pa kahit ang buluhaton, never ever, karon pa. Let's stand up and let's pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Let's close our eyes. Let's allow God to speak to us this morning. Let's allow God, the Holy Spirit, to help us internalize His message to us this morning. Oh God, hallelujah, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for the breakthrough of your word, oh God. Lord, salamat kaayo ginuo sa imong pagpukaw ka namo. And Lord, know every area in our lives, oh God, that needs stirring up. Ginuo. Butangi kami desire, ginuo, to, to level up our passion for you. To level up our love for you, for your word, and for your kingdom. Lord, we pray that you would seal your message with your cross. Nga mamuhat ka to sa amo mga kinabuhi. Nga nadunggan to namo, Lord, that it would not just be passing through to our other ears. But Lord, let it be internalized. Let it be actualized in our lives. Use us mightily, O oh God. Use us mightily, Lord, for the expansion of your kingdom. You know our hearts. You know our everything. You are our maker, God. Naibalugi ka ginoo sa among ipangbati, sa among mga motives, O God. We present this to you. We present this to you, Father. And Lord, purify us, Lord. Any unconfessed sin we have before you, we pray for you to cleanse every unrighteousness we have in our hearts. And Father, we pray for spiritual awakening. And Lord, sa among congregation, na among mga pag-ampo, ginoo nga, kadto mga nagkaluya, ginoo, padayon ka, Lord, nga ibalik, i-reignite ni mo, Lord, ang kainit sa among panarbisyo niya ka ni mo. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. And as we'll be ending, O Lord, the sharing, Lord, of your word, we give you back all the glory and honor that belongs to you. Hallelujah to your name. We glorify you, O Lord. And Father, I pray for this congregation, Lord, that your mercy, that your grace abounds all throughout the week, O God. Every family represented, every ambition, every passion, O God, every desire, Lord, brought before your altar, O God. Let it pass through your word, Father. Salamat sa imong kaayo. Salamat, Gino. And Lord, salamat for using me as your mouthpiece. I have done my part, Lord. It's your turn now, God. Nga, nga padayuno ni mo ang unsa ma imo na sundan ginoo nga mga plano sa pagsatagsa ng mga kinabuhi. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone will say, Amen!